on tonight's edition of The Best Times, we visit with three people who have made a difference in the lives of the people around them, and you will hear their words of wisdom. Funding for the Best Times is provided by... Since 1988, the H.W. Durham Foundation has been focused on aging issues, providing grants to programs like the Best Times to enrich and improve the quality of life for our older citizens. The Best Times is the only monthly news magazine exclusively for the age 50 plus reader. Your copy is free at over 200 locations with important stories and news you don't want to miss. The Best Times is always the best. Trezevant, a life care community, a celebration of life. The responsible decision for your well-being now and in the long term. And being responsible has never been such a hoot. TrezevantManor.org Hello, I'm Chris Hardaway. Welcome to this edition of The Best Times, a series that looks at life after 50. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt once said, when you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. Tonight you're going to meet three people, different ages, different backgrounds, different careers, but they do have one thing in common. They've all been driven by a passion to contribute to the lives of others. One is dedicated to reshaping the way we think of aging in America. Another has devoted her long life to helping the neediest among us. And you'll meet a man who has brought laughter and learning to our school children. We begin with the man who is publisher and editor of The Best Times News Magazine, this show's namesake. It's his third career, and his mission is to let people know that life doesn't stop at 60 or 70 or 80. Let's meet Lester Gingold. This is Lester Gingold at the Germantown Senior Expo. And he's in his element, working the crowd, handing out copies of the newspaper and his business card, taking pictures of anyone with an interesting story to tell. In case you're wondering, Lester is 87 years old. Having retired twice, he's now working his third job, or as he likes to call it, his encore career. And I have people asking me all the time about, when are you going to retire? And I say, I don't plan to retire. Why should I retire? And you know the interesting thing right now with the economy as it is, and the AARP has done research on this, the people who 15, 20 years ago said they were ready to retire when they hit 60 or 65 no longer say that. And the reason they don't, they say, what will my, second, what will my encore career be? What will I be doing? And the thing that's happening right now, people who perhaps retire or think they're starting for retirement are really not in retirement, but they're ready for an encore career. Lester Gingold was born in Birmingham, Alabama on New Year's Day in 1922. After graduating from Birmingham Southern College, he promptly went to war with the combat engineers in the European theater. After the war, he began a 34-year career as general merchandise manager with Sears. Lester has been extremely active in many civic organizations in the city and has applied his marketing expertise to such events as the Cotton Carnival. At age 59, with a successful business career behind him, he retired from Sears. But that didn't last long. The commercial appeal coaxed him to become advertising director for the paper, a position he occupied for 13 years. His second retirement at age 72 didn't last long either. He took over the reins of a publication called Active Times, which soon became The Best Times, and is not just his encore career, but is his passion. I wish I could package that and sell it and know what it was. I really do, because I guess I'm envious of many others I find with a passion that I feel is more than mine. And I guess the word passion has been the one that so many people describe what I do, because I feel that way about it. 
I am emotionally involved in what I'm doing. I mean emotionally involved. And if I find, it, I think that every paper, no matter how good it is, could have been better. I'm never satisfied, never satisfied. And a good friend of mine, a psychologist, is at Lester, he said, you have no reason to question yourself, uh, but I expect so much from people. I'm still very demanding, and I realize that may be a fault to a degree, and I understand that. But I expect so much from people, but I continue to expect so much from myself. And uh, I guess as long as I do that, I'll, I'll feel the passion to do even better. The Best Times is a free, advertiser-supported publication found in newsstands throughout the Memphis area. A full-time staff of five and dozens of freelance writers produce this monthly newspaper from their offices in East Memphis. Lester is not just the publisher, but has become one of the prime advocates for an aging population in America. When I started with publishing, I decided in this new career I had to learn about aging. I had to learn about gerontology. I had to start an education of myself. If I was going to publish a newspaper and try to be creative in what I could do and an advocate for the aging, I had to understand it. Aging today is so different today than it's ever been. You can't think today of what aging is versus what it was 25, 30 years ago. The young population, they're more demanding. Uh, no one is going to go into a field and, and say that uh, the history is back of us. They want to continue making history. Pick up any copy of The Best Times and you'll experience the changing dynamic of aging in this country. And for Lester, every story has meaning. Here's a guy who's a pilot. It, in his, he's now in his 90s. This was taken when he was in his late 80s. And he and his wife are both pilots and still flying. What does that tell me? That, that, that I should give up because I'm only 87? We've got to remember that as our hearing may diminish, as our vision may diminish, as some of our physical capabilities may diminish, as long as we have the antennas up and we have a feeling of excitement for what's going on and a passion to serve others, not just ourselves, but to serve others, then we can, people say, why do you keep doing that business? You're not making any money out of it. It's not for making money. I've never done this for that. That's not the purpose of it. I'm an advocate for what I'm, I'm a passion about this. After a lifetime of stories and a legacy of helping others, Lester has a philosophy of life that serves as wisdom for us all. Life is a continued learning experience. And I continue to learn at 87, and I continue to feel inquisitive about things at this age. And I think that, that's the thing that, that, that I think is so important. It's been important to me in my life that I that my thirst for knowledge continues. Talked with a friend of mine about having balls in the air. When you're younger, you can balance perhaps four or five balls in the air. As you age, perhaps not so many. But if you can at least concentrate on one or two of those, you become such a better and improved person. I feel that I have chances to improve every day. Part of my wisdom would be, if you don't have something creative you're doing, find something creative to do. I had a friend who retired, he was 70 years old. He took up a piano, never played piano before in his life, but creatively wanted to learn to play piano. There's so many opportunities today that we didn't have before. I'd like you to meet a soldier in the Army of God, the Salvation Army. 
I first met Brigadier Gertrude Perdue three years ago when she was just 100 years old. She's devoted her life to serving the neediest among us for over 80 years. She says, you never know when the seed you plant today will take hold. And she's planted many seeds in her lifetime and has lived to see the harvest. Let's meet Brigadier Gertrude Perdue. This is the Spirit of Giving Awards, which recognizes volunteers throughout the Memphis area. And today, Brigadier Gertrude Perdue accepts yet another honor for her lifetime of service in the Salvation Army. I've always been a Salvationist. My parents were Army officers, and I observed them in their work, their service, their ministry, and it appealed to me very, very much. And I had determined very early in my teenage that I was going to follow in their footsteps. In September of 1930, Gertrude became a commissioned officer or ordained minister in the Salvation Army. Four years later, she met and married a fellow officer, Brigadier Bramwell Perdue. For the next 39 years, they crisscrossed the United States on their Army assignments before coming to Memphis in 1962 as area commanders. It was a life on the move, but always motivated by the desire to serve others. I saw the need in the world. I saw suffering, hurting people, and it appealed to me, and I wanted to be part of that ministry. I was trained in the college in 1930, and I worked on the trading college staff for two years, and then I went out into the middle of the Depression in Huntington, Indiana, and I was in command. At, I was 22 by that time, and I was in command of the Salvation Army in that little town. Gertrude has lived through some of the darkest hours in American history, none more so than the Great Depression, where she tells the story of an out-of-work artist desperate for a job. And I said, well, let's pray about it and see what we can do with it. And we did, had a little conversation, and he left the office, went up the street, <clears throat> and about an hour he came back, and he said, guess what? I found work. I said, what are you doing? I mind you, an artist. He said, I'm washing dishes in the restaurant for my food. During her time in Memphis, Gertrude and her husband served this community with distinction. After the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., she scheduled monthly forums at Salvation Army headquarters to help heal the wounds of this tragedy. She saw a need for adequate and affordable daycare for low-income Memphians and partnered with the Junior League to open the first daycare centers that operated on a sliding fee scale. And after almost 80 years of service, what has been the most rewarding aspect of her life in the Salvation Army? Being able to love and work with people. I have an intense love to do for people to help. That's what drew me to begin with, and it has extended itself all over my, all through my career. That's why I go to the VA hospital and do what I do. It's just a few days before Easter, and Gertrude is organizing a group of volunteers to take specially prepared Easter baskets to patients at the VA hospital. It's just one more example of the tireless service that Gertrude has given and continues to give to this city. And I tell my women in my training sessions, our bag of cookies and our coffee and our lemonade is only a way to touch people's lives. That's just the medium through which we are enabled to see people and express love. Three years ago, when we shot this profile of Gertrude, she was about to celebrate her 100th birthday with a fundraising banquet featuring Willard Scott and her picture on a jar of Smuckers. At the time, I asked her how she felt about being a century old. 
when I was a, probably elementary school age, I used to look on old people and think, I don't want to ever be that old. So I never thought that I would ever live this long. And I used to say, I don't think I want to live that long. But as age grew and grew, I thought, how wonderful. And right now, I think it's great to be 100. Gertrude calls herself a handmaiden of God, and she has lived a life of service. Perhaps we can all learn from her advice. Enjoy life. Even in this changing world, don't get discouraged about it. Just go with the flow. Go with the change. Take it because it comes and make the best. Not only make the best, but try to make it better. Anyone who does anything to help a child in his life is a hero to me. Those are the words of Mr. Rogers, and they apply to the man that a generation of local children know as Mr. Chuck. Chuck Scruggs has been a broadcaster all his life, but he never expected to spend his retirement years as a television personality teaching life lessons to school children. I interviewed him two years ago, just a few months before his retirement as educational manager at WKNO. I'd like you to meet Chuck Scruggs. Hey, there's Mr. Chuck. Well, hello, friends. Hello, Mr. Chuck. A generation of children, mine included, have grown up watching and learning from Mr. Chuck. His show and his educational outreach programs have been a part of the K&O Kids lineup since 1993. But who is Mr. Chuck? Mr. Chuck is uh, a caring father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and uh, one who is living his passion. Chuck Scruggs grew up in Chattanooga and got his first radio experience when he was just 13 years old. Originally, he wanted to become a lawyer, so he attended Tennessee State University in Nashville as a business major. But he'd been bitten by the radio bug, so he transferred to the University of Cincinnati to pursue a broadcast degree and a career behind the microphone. I was known as Bugs Scruggs, the man with the plugs in my early days. Those were fun days, believe me. They were really fun days, and uh, I miss the interaction, the consistent interaction with the public, taking requests and just having conversation. Chuck worked at radio stations in Cincinnati, San Francisco, and Oakland before taking the general manager's job at one of the most famous stations in the South, WDIA. It offered me an opportunity to really come in and, and have fun because the station was a fun station. It was it had a successful history. It, of course, offered an opportunity to really have an impact on the community. And that was the basis of my whole interest in becoming and remaining in broadcasting rather than law per se. I figured as a lawyer, I wanted to change things. But when I found out about the advantages of broadcasting, I could change things before they became law. I could help them become law. I mean, it, it was exciting. At one point in its history, WDIA's slogan was 50,000 watts of goodwill. And they served the community with numerous fundraising events, such as the Starlight Review and the Goodwill Review. The impact of the station on the community had an impact on its general manager. That was probably the great motivator that kept me hanging in there because I saw some results we were bringing. Sometimes we didn't solve problems, but then I began to learn that we were having an impact on families over the long haul, and especially on children. Chuck worked at WDIA for 12 years. When he left, he spent a short time in the real estate business, 
but he couldn't stay away from broadcasting for very long. So he began to volunteer at WKNO. One day, uh, the question came up uh, about a children's program, and uh, I was approached and asked if I'd like to host it. And I said, well, uh, I hadn't thought about it, but since you asked the question, I think I would. It was quite a transition from commercial radio to public television, but this was really a great highlight in my life, in, my, in the whole area of, of my development. In a sense, Chuck Scruggs is following the example of his mother, who was a preschool teacher. She was highly influential in my choices and all the things that prepared me for what I have chosen to do. She cared about all the children that she cared for. She did more than just care philosophically for them. She did things to express her care and concern. And I thought that was wonderful. Hello, hello. Hello, Mr. Chuck is an award-winning show directed at preschoolers and their parents and caregivers. It's designed to prepare children to be ready to learn once they enter school. In this episode, Mr. Chuck is exploring water. Everywhere! <laughs> With kids, there are certain things that are important to them. And it's our job as adults to find out what they are. We can't force things on children they know what's important to them. And it all comes from how, how they observe and what they gain from what they observe. And they put a value to it. And they decide it's good or bad, and it may not be either, <laughs> maybe somewhere in between, but they make a decision. The point is, can we determine their empathy for this or that and use those things as avenues to communicate the right messages to them. In addition to the TV show, there are newsletters filled with information for parents and caregivers. And Mr. Chuck makes regular personal appearances. We still go out into the community and we uh, read to children and we visit children's classes and we go to child care centers and read to children. I, I think I'm making a difference and then I, I, I also discover time and again that there are areas I wish I could do better. I wish could, I wish I could do more. It's uh, very important to be, uh, for young people, and even for young parents particularly, to have images. Not necessarily Mr. Chuck. They need a lot more than Mr. Chuck. I think they need images from every quarter and corner of their lives. Images that they can relate to, that they can rely on, they can believe in. But I've seen too many lives that are hanging in the bouts, hanging just, they have no hope themselves, and there doesn't seem to be enough hopeful, cent hopeful sense centered around them through the people who could affect their lives positively. Uh, that'll, if you care enough, and you don't have to care too deeply, if you're sensitive enough, you have to be moved by that in some way. Goodbye, Mr. So Chuck. I'm just doing what Goodbye, I can. Goodbye, Mr. Chuck. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this edition of The Best Times, and please join us next week. But until then, visit us online at wkno.org slash besttimes, where you can watch past episodes of the show. And email us your feedback and story ideas to besttimes at wkno.org. And while you're online, click on over to Next Avenue, PBS's website where grown-ups keep growing. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hardaway. Good night. 
Funding for the best times is provided by Trezevant, a life care community, a celebration of life. The responsible decision for your well-being now and in the long term. And being responsible has never been such a hoot. TrezevantManor.org The Best Times is the only monthly news magazine exclusively for the age 50 plus reader. Your copy is free at over 200 locations with important stories and news you don't want to miss. The Best Times is always the best. Since 1988, the H.W. Durham Foundation has been focused on aging issues, providing grants to programs like The Best Times to enrich and improve the quality of life for our older citizens.